friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. As I am reviewing luxury beauty products for you guys every single week, one of the biggest questions that I always get is, Sophia, what is a good makeup brush for that product? What is going to be a brush that's going to give you the most beautiful, the most seamless, the most professional looking application? And that is what this video is going to be about today. I'm going to be going through some of our all-time favorite luxury beauty products, and I'm going to be recommending some beautiful food day that you can pair alongside it to give you that perfect application. So if you want to hang out with me today and get some amazing makeup brush recommendations, then keep watching. Okay, party people, before getting into these recommendations, I just want to mention this video is totally not sponsored, but I do want to give a special thanks to the team at Food Day Beauty for gifting me some of the brushes that I'm going to feature in this video. I like to show you guys old favorites from my collection, but I also like to keep testing new things so I can continue to recommend more amazing, amazing brushes. And if you haven't heard of Food Day Beauty before, they are a fantastic online retailer for beautiful hand bundled Japanese makeup brushes. All the brushes I'm going to feature in today's video, you can purchase on Food Day Beauty. I have a bunch of brushes in a range of prices that I'm going to be showing you guys. And if you've never shot from Food Day Beauty before, they have kindly given me a coupon code so you can save a little bit of money off of your first order. So I'm going to have all the brushes that I mentioned in this video linked in the description box down below. I do usually use affiliate links, friends. So when you click on my links, I do earn a small commission if you choose to shop on Food Day Beauty. And with that, friends, let's get into this video. I cannot wait to show you these brushes. Let's kick things off, friends, with the makeup product that I get the most questions about when it comes to brush pairings, and that is Chanel blushes. I love Chanel blushes. I love how beautiful and subtle and chic they are, but a lot of you guys tell me that you have trouble picking these up from the pan. Some of you guys also tell me that you get hard pan with these, and the trick with the Chanel blushes or anything that is maybe a little bit harder to grab, more likely pigmented, the Chantecaille blurring powder, for example, some of the Tom Ford baked gelée products, just like the highlighters, some of the bronzers, and another common example, at least for me, is the Dior Forever bronzers because these are a little bit more subtle. When it comes to all of these products, my recommendation is to go with a goat hair brush because goat hair, it's a little bit more durable. It's a little bit thicker. It's not the softest fiber out there when it comes to brushes, but it's really going to do a good job of picking up the pigment and depositing it on the face. Goat hair bristles also, they still are really soft. So they're going to do a good job of diffusing that maybe more finely milled powder across the face. Let me show you guys some of my favorite goat hair brushes for this purpose. Starting off on the more premium side of my recommendations, one of my favorite brush series ever for both its beauty, but also its functionality is the Koyudo Kakishi Buzome series. These are some of the most beautiful and softest goat hair brushes that I have in my collection. They are a really good balance of being functional workhorse brushes, but also being extremely luxurious. They are so, so soft, and I love the gorgeous design of these brushes. They come with these beautiful cherry wood handles and then these beautiful hand bundled goat bristles that are also hand dyed with a traditional technique. So it's all around super beautiful. They do a really good job of picking up the pigment and buffing it out in the most luxurious way on the face. I like to use the larger brushes in this series for my bronzer and then I'll usually use the smaller brushes for blush. Another fantastic brush recommendation for this style of product friends is this one from the Be Shadow Long series. I've become obsessed with this line since I discovered it on Food Day Beauty earlier this year. All of their brushes have this gorgeous lacquered wood handle. I love the vibe of this with the gold ferrule. Stop! They all look so luxurious and they're actually pretty reasonably priced compared to a lot of other brushes out there on the Food Day market. This is the brush where if you have a product that you just cannot pick up from the pan, this is going to do the job. I think it's a mixture of the bristles that they use, but also the shape. And you can see just how much product you are picking up with this brush because it has the black bristles. So it's very clear how much you have on there. So you're not going to overdo it either. This is going to be the one if you really, really are getting hard pan a lot on your blushes. Another one that I think is great is this one from the Chikohoro Passion Series. The Passion Series in particular, great line if you want something that is a good mix of affordable but really good quality. All of the brushes are very soft. They're not going to be as soft as, you know, the premium Koyudo ones, but they work really, really well and they do a great job at picking up the pigment. Once again, all of these brushes are made with silky soft goat hair, so they're going to do a great job of picking up the pigment, but they feel really luxurious on the cheek. I 
love that these have the cute little hot pink handles as well. So you get something kind of decorative. It's cute, it's luxurious, but it does a very, very good job at picking up the Chanel blushes and some of those big Gillette products. And then the final recommendation that I have here, guys, is a little bit of a bigger brush. I wanted to recommend something that was angled, flatter. If you want to do something with more precision, maybe contour, or you want a brush that kind of works for bronzer, contour, blush, highlighter, pretty much runs the gamut. This is an excellent one from Chica Hodo. This is the RP2. So I'll link that down below. And just like the others, it picks up the product super duper well, but I particularly like the shape of this one because it makes things so multi-purpose. You can pretty much do all of your face powders with just one brush. We talked about Chanel blushes, so now I feel obligated to also give you recommendations for Chanel eyeshadows. And Chanel eyeshadows, they're not supposed to be super pigmented. Chanel makeup in general is supposed to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more diffused, but there are some Chanel eyeshadows that I kind of have trouble picking up in the pan. So when I go into these types of products. I like to go for eye brushes that they do a good job of grabbing the pigments, but they also are super soft for the delicate area around the eyes. And they still give me that very kind of soft, diffuse type of look. They're good at blending the shadows in a very gentle way. So the brushes that I wanna show you guys right here, these are actually also from Bichado. So you're getting the lacquered African wood handles. You're getting the 24 karat plated brass ferrule. So you're still getting that beautiful look, but these are actually made with pine squirrel. So it's squirrel hair. It's going to be super duper soft, but pine squirrel in particular, those bristles are going to do a better job at picking up and blending the pigments. Usually when I go into just like a regular squirrel hair brush with some of the Chanel shadows, I feel like I just can't really pick up enough from the pan. Like the brushes are soft, but I'm just not getting enough color on my eye. I actually really like this very large chunky one right here. This is the perfect one and done brush. If you only have two seconds, you can dip this into one of your Chanel eyeshadows or an eyeshadow from pretty much any brand, sweep it across the eye. It diffuses the color so, so beautifully, smooths everything out and you're pretty much ready to go. So I love to use this as my first step or something for a one and done. And then the other two that I have here, I kind of almost curated my own little set here from Fude Beauty. These are gonna be a little bit smaller. I like to use the medium one just to apply, you know, some more precise shadow on the lid. And then the small one right here, this is good if you want to do the inner corner, the lower lash line, or even if you wanna put a little bit of shimmer in the center of the eye, because a lot of Chanel palettes nowadays have that one little topper shade and this brush is perfect for applying that just where you need it so you don't overdo it and you don't get fallout throughout the day. I actually have one little bonus brush to show you guys because it is so cute and it's a really good shade for my minimalists out there. This is from Koyomo. It's just a cute little aged goat hair brush and it has the sweetest little pearlescent pink handle. This is just like the pine squirrel, gonna be super soft, picks up the pigment really well. I also really like the shape of this brush because if you're somebody that does pretty simple looks with these types of palettes, you can easily use this brush to do an entire look. You can use it this way to get some shadow on the lid. You can turn it to get a little something in the crease. And it's also small enough if you wanna do a little bit of inner corner and lower lash line action. If you're somebody where you have a pretty small makeup bag or maybe a small everyday makeup bag and you just need a little brush to kind of pair with your small Chanel palette, I feel like this one is a really good option and it's just so darn cute. Second to the Chanel blushes, I think that the other product that I get the most questions about when it comes to brush pairings is the Chantecai Future Skin Foundation and similarly the Chanel Sublimage Foundation pretty much in the same category these foundations that come in these little pots a lot of people are just baffled at how to apply these I recommend something that's going to be synthetic or goat hair because it's going to work really well with a liquid a cream a gel type of formulation and specifically with the Chantecai you want something that's going to fit in the little jar make it easy to get the product out I really have been loving this Mizuho foundation brush. I like that it has this sort of little nubby round tip so it fits perfectly within the jar and then it's just so soft. It is a synthetic brush but it feels like natural fibers. It's just that soft. I don't get any streaks from this and also because of the shape I feel like it's pretty easy to get around the curves of my face. I don't think I would use this necessarily for concealer but there's another one that I would. This is a foundation brush from 
Hokudo. Hopefully I'm pronouncing all of these names okay, guys. I am trying my best. This one is smaller, it is flat, and it is slanted. So I actually really like this one for kind of blending out concealer. Sometimes I go in with my foundation and I'll put in a little layer there, and then I'll go in with concealer and I'll put that just where I need it. So if you have, for example, the Chanel Sublimage concealer that comes in the little jar, this is gonna be a really good brush for that as well. And then my last recommendation, which is probably my favorite, is this mineral brush from Koyuto. This is a part of their Fupa series. This is made of synthetic fibers and it just feels like, how do I describe this? It feels like butter on your face. It feels like a spa experience. It feels how these bristles look. They are incredibly glossy and smooth. So the foundation or pretty much any type of liquid or cream product that you apply with this brush just gets buffed into the skin in the most delicious way. It's really hard to explain. Hopefully you guys can see from the demo how much I enjoy using this brush. If you're going to get any foundation brush or any liquid brush that I recommend in this video, I highly recommend checking this one out. This one has been such a treat to use. Like I said, it feels so nice on the skin. It's not gonna be as precise as the other ones right here. Like these are a little bit easy to get in and out of some of those jarred makeup products, but this one, you still can very easily get it off of the cap of the Shantikai Future Skin Foundation. And it just feels so good. Mm, all of these are total winners. Speaking of liquid products, I also wanted to recommend some brushes for the Chanel Water Fresh line. These are pretty unique products. If you've never tried these from Chanel, basically it is a range of foundation, skin tints, and blushes where all of the products are formulated with like 70 or 80% water and then the pigments are suspended within the gel-like liquid. Very moisturizing, a really, really beautiful line from Chanel. This is actually what I'm wearing on my face today is the Chanel Complexion Touch. And the brushes that I like to use for these types of products are usually goat hair or synthetic, just like the Shantikai Future Skin Foundation. But I like something where when I deposit this on the back of my hand, it's going to do a good job of kind of bursting those little globs of pigment so that you can kind of release the color onto your hand, mix it up, and then you blend it onto the face. One brush that I've really been liking for the Chanel Water Fresh line is this foundation brush from Mizuho. Now this one is different from the one that I just showed you. Obviously it's a very different shade it also is a different color, etc. This one is a blend of synthetic and goat fibers. I like the fact that it's a blend because you still get that softness, but you also get the durability that you need for something that you're going to be using with these very, very watery products. I also like the fact that it has a flat slanted tip right here because it makes it easy to kind of break up the pigments on the back of your hand and then spread them in a very nice sheer way on the face. These Chanel Water Fresh products, they're supposed to be more of like that sheer watercolor type of effect on the skin. And I feel like this brush does a very good job of achieving that. It's a little hard to tell as well, like the top of the brush is pretty wispy. So once again, I feel like it does a good job of breaking up those pigments and smoothing them onto the face. You certainly could use this one as well, but I feel like this one, it just does a better job with this particularly liquidy product. And then finally, guys, you can also use the Fupa brush for the Chanel Water Fresh pigments. I don't know if I would use this for the blushes because this is a little bit on the large side. But if you have the Complexion Touch Foundation, if you have the Chanel Water Fresh Tint, I feel like this is a really, really good brush for that as well. Another very popular product, the Tom Ford Wet Dry Eyeshadows. The beauty of this formula is exactly that. You can use it wet or you can use it dry. So you need brushes that are going to do a good job of picking up these pigments and applying them in the dry format, getting that really nice, soft, diffuse type of look that people want from these Tom Ford palettes. But you also need brushes that that are going to be durable enough to wet if you want to go in with the wet application, which gives you just like a little bit more of a pop, a little bit more pigmentation. And then if you go back in with the dry formulation, you don't want it to get all gross in the pan. So the brushes that I recommend are these from Tonsado. I picked these up for the last video that I did with Food A Beauty. These come in a set, but you can purchase them individually. These are special because they are made of pony hair. Pony hair is very soft. These feel super soft on my eyes, even around the delicate areas. 
because my eyes are very sensitive. But I like that these can stand up to cream eyeshadows if I want to go in wet, if I want to apply shimmers as well. These are extremely durable for that. I also like that the brushes that come in this set, they are flat. So if I want to like lay down a wet pigment, they do a really good job of controlling the color and also preventing any fallout if I'm going to go in with a shimmer. So these are fantastic. I like the fact that they look like artist brushes as well. Like you're going to do an oil painting or something like that. They kind of give me that vibe, you know, when I want to be a little bit more artistic. And then the other brush that I have right here, which is perfect for this purpose, is this little one from that Chikahoto Passion series that I mentioned earlier, guys. This is super soft, but once again, they're also super durable. I wet this brush all the time. I like the fact that it has this little flat shape, so I can kind of turn it on its side if I want to get a little crease action or if I want to lay down the pigment wet or dry, I'm able to do that as well. So these are good brushes that they're going to be soft. You can use them with all your other eyeshadow palettes, but if you want the option of going in wet, then you can do that and you're not going to ruin your brush. But Sophia, what about Dior eyeshadows? When it comes to Dior eyeshadows, just like Tom Ford and Chanel, I feel like I'm going for more of that softer look. Like I never go into these with a wet brush. It's just not something that I do. And I also rarely have trouble picking up Dior eyeshadows. I feel like they are a little bit more pigmented and silky than the ones from Chanel. They're just a little bit of a different formulation. Doesn't make them any better or worse. So with the Dior shadows, I like to go in with something that's going to be super soft and luxurious that kind of pairs really well with the mostly satin formulas that you see in their palettes. And one of my favorite lines of Fude that I like to use for this purpose is the Chikohoto Z series. I have a couple of shapes to show you guys right here, and I will show you guys the demo of how I got this eye look today. These are made of the silkiest, the softest squirrel hair. These are premium brushes. If you want something that is just a little luxury to use every single morning with your Dior eyeshadow palettes, these are going to be perfect. These are not going to be good at grabbing up product that is kind of hard to get up from the pan. That's not what these are for. These are for a beautiful, soft, and diffused look. So if you have shadows that you really don't have trouble picking up, or maybe you have some that are a little bit too pigmented and you need something that's going to be more subtle and diffused, I would highly recommend going in with a squirrel hair brush just like these from Chikahoto. Next up, friends, I have some brush recommendations for some of our favorite luxury finishing powders. I'm always asked about the Guerlain Meteorites. It's a very beautiful and fun product to use, but I do agree you kind of need a specific brush for it. I'm also asked very often about the Hourglass finishing powders, especially the ones that come in this sort of palette format, because as you can see, the pan sizes are not super big. So if you go in with a really big powder brush that you might use for other products, you might pick up a little bit of the blush or a little bit of the highlighter in the pan next door. And we don't want that when we're doing our makeup. And also guys, we have the Givenchy Prism Libre setting powders and blushes as well. And I feel like the trick for all of these products is to find a brush that fits within the little opening or within the pans for that product, but also is fluffy enough to really buff it across the face. Especially if you have a finishing powder, you don't want that to be blotchy on your face. You want something that's really gonna air all of that out across the skin. And same thing with the blushes. These can be pretty pigmented, so you want something that's really gonna shear that color across the cheek. And speaking of the Chikahoto Z series, my first recommendation are some of the powder brushes that are in that line. I have right here the Z1 and the Z9. They're pretty similar. I don't don't think that you need both. But what I like about these is that they're not so big that they don't fit within the Guerlain Meteorites or the Hourglass Pans. As you can see, they fit really beautifully within the ones that I have right here. And you even have a little bit of room to swirl it around and get a ton of powder on there. But they are still fluffy and luxurious enough to really buff that finishing powder all 
over the face. These are gonna be more of a premium option. They are made of squirrel hair, which is going to be more expensive. But in my opinion, I do think that they are worth it. They're kind of like that perfect size where you can do the powder, the bronzer, the blush. So you can use these with a lot of different products. And they are some of the softest brushes that I have in my collection. Another really beautiful brush line to use with these types of products is the Chikahoto FO series. This is also gonna be a little bit more premium. These brushes are made of silver fox. So they're gonna be almost as soft as squirrel hair, but they're going to be a little bit more durable. So particularly with the hourglass palette, sometimes I will mix these all together. And you'll notice I'm getting like a little bit of hard pan on this one right here. This is gonna be a little bit hardier and more durable to pick up that product. Also the slanted cheek one in particular, this is the FO4. I really, really like this for both blush and you can also use it for highlighter. It fits perfectly within the pans of all of the hourglass palettes and it does a really great job of picking up the pigment. You can use these as well for the Givenchy blushes. It fits really well inside there. You can use these for the meteorites. These are just a really good staple for powder products and they also have some larger sizes in the line, of course. For something a little bit more affordable, I also have this adorable little brush from Koyomo. You guys saw me show you the matching eye brush a little bit earlier in this video. I do think that both of these would make such a cute gift alongside another powder makeup product. So you could gift somebody the meteorites and then you could give them these little brushes. I don't know. I think that's such a cute gift idea, but I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of pairing this with a meteorites just on your vanity. This is like your little mini brush that you only use for your meteorites. And it is a little bit small, but you can use this for finishing powder because it's very airy and wispy. It's great for blush. You could even use it for highlighter. It's a really cute little brush. And then guys, I also have this one from the Kyoredo Kuami series. This one in particular, I really like for highlighter. So if you're going into like the hourglass ambient lighting edit palettes and you're looking for something that's gonna be good to blend out those types of highlighters, or even you could use this as a setting powder, like a setting powder under the eyes. Any of the ones that I've shown you here in this video so far, this is great for that. It's more of a precision brush. This is silky soft. It's pretty much as soft as the Z series from Chikahoto, in my opinion. And the handles of these brushes as well, hopefully you can see that, have a beautiful little sparkle detail that is meant to look like the night's sky. This reminds me a lot of the Wayne Goss airbrush that I don't think you can get anymore, guys, except this one is even wispier and more multi-purpose. So if you were looking for a dupe for that brush, which I use a lot in my tutorials and you guys always ask about, this is a really good alternative. And lastly, friends, you also can use the Koyudo Fupa mineral brush. Is there anything that this brush can't do. This is going to be a little bit big for like the Prism Libre blushes. Like that's a little bit too big. You're going to pick up too much pigment, I think. But for more of like a finishing powder, like the meteorites or the hourglass powders, this is super nice. Not only can you use it for the creams and liquids, but you can also use this to buff in your finishing powders as well. A couple more brush pairings here for you guys. And the next category is going to be cream, contour, and bronzer, specifically the Tom Ford shade and Illuminate, the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer, and also, of course, my personal favorite, the Westman Atelier face tray stick. And when it comes to these types of products, I like to choose brushes that are either goat hair because it can stand up to the creams and liquids, or synthetic or a mixture of the two. One brush that I've really been enjoying, I featured this one in my last video I did with Fude Beauty, is this gorgeous Bichado foundation brush. If you can't tell guys, I'm really obsessed with Bichado this year, okay? I love the handles, love the vibe, love the fibers. The quality is so good. And this foundation brush, obviously you can use it for foundation. You could use it to really paint on any type of cream or liquid base product, but you also can use it very, very easily easily for cream blush, cream bronzer, and cream contour. And part of the reason for that is not only because it's made with goat hair bristles, so they're kind of like hardy, they can stand up to the creams, but I also particularly like this shape. It is dense. It is kind of like chubby.
chubby and it also is not necessarily flat, but it's more narrow on the side here. It has a pinched shape. So that allows me to really get under the cheekbone with these types of contour products. But if you want to do it on the top of the cheekbone as well, you still have some precision to kind of blend it out. So it's big enough where you can get it across the cheek, but it's also precise enough where you can really shape the face. So yeah, you can use this for so many things. Like I said, foundation, cream bronzer, contour, cream blush. You can do pretty much your entire face full of cream products if you just have that one brush. The other one that I really like is the one I showed you earlier for the Chanel Water Fresh collection. This is that Mizuho brush that is a blend of the natural and synthetic fibers. And I like this one also because it has that flat angled shape. So if you want to be a little bit more precise with your contour, you can do that as well. Next up friends, we have the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral Special Shades. As many of us like to fondly call them, we love these, but how do you get these on your eyes without making a big glittery mess all over your cheekbones. I will tell you how I like to do it. I like to use a more precise flat brush. I will usually wet it with a little bit of water or mixing medium, something like that. And that's going to give me a little bit more control to really precisely lay down the glitter and not get a lot of fallout. And the two brushes that I have to recommend to you today are actually pretty similar. This one is from Bichotto and this one is from Chikohoto. They're pretty similar, except the Chikohoto one is a little bit pointier. So you can really kind of get into the little nooks and crannies of the eye around the inner corner, but they're both really good. And both of these are made with a type of weasel hair. And weasel hair I find is really, really good for shimmer products because it's kind of like naturally water resistant. They're very smooth, glossy fibers. So you don't have to worry about ruining the brush if you get it wet. And it does a really great job of picking up the pigments, but then almost like letting them go, depositing them onto the eye very seamlessly. And because these are sort of thinner, flatter, and firmer, they're going to be more precise with the placement of the shadows because you really don't want to take the Pat McGrath special shades and buff them all over the eye. You certainly can, but it usually becomes a little bit of a messy project. Next up, friends, I have two recommendations for liquid and cream single eyeshadows. We're talking the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. We're talking the RMS eye lights that I love to use here on this channel or what I have on my eyes today, which is the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex Shadows. I absolutely love these. The first brush that I have here is a little bit more precise. This is a small synthetic brush from Bichado. Surprise, surprise, another Bichado brush. I love this because it is incredibly soft around the delicate eye area, but as you guys can see in the demo, because it has those synthetic bristles, they do a really good job of spreading that color around the sensitive parts of the eye. Even in the inner corner, you can even use this on the lower lash line. It's kind of the perfect shape where you can do the whole lid, but also be precise in other areas. The other brush that I have right here, I thought was pretty unique. This is from a brand called Tao House. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is called their cream color brush. Now this is a pretty big one, but this is good if you want to do a quick one and done swipe all over the lid. This is also really good, I think, for doing your concealer. I had a demo of me doing that here. This is made of goat hair, so you can use it for the creams and liquids, but it's still going to be super soft on the skin. I think you could also use this for like contouring your nose if that's something you like to do. Even applying cream or liquid highlighter, if you guys have any from luxury brands like Gucci Beauty, like RMS, even the Rare Beauty liquid highlighters, this would be really good for that. So I thought this was a really cool multi-purpose brush that's good for creams and liquids across many different categories. And those are all the brush recommendations that I have for you today, my friends. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up before you go. And most importantly, sound off in the comments section down below and let me know if you enjoyed this video. What other product and brush pairings do you want to see next? Should this be a series on my channel? I would love to do that for you guys. And if you you have made it this far in the video and you are not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? I upload new videos just like this one every single week. I have a lot of fun and helpful guides. I also do a lot of new makeup reviews here on this channel. So hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.